I think that um, information over the past few years is, is it's gone wild. Um, and that's a good thing. With the advent of the internet, I think patients are becoming more empowered. They are aware of studies that are available. Um, if their disease has got to a certain point and there's no longer standard therapies that are available, they can look on the internet and they find, well, so-and-so is doing a research into my particular disease and there might be a drug that's becoming available within a clinical trial. And I think that the more information out there, the better. This can only be good for patients. And I think this information needs to be given to patients so they can help themselves come to decisions about what treatment is right for them, at what point it's right for them, and how they can um, move forward with their particular disease. Um, so I think that um, certainly internet, written stuff, uh, anything that we can give people verbally, booklets, pamphlets, information is key. If people haven't got that at their fingertips, how can they be expected to make a decision? And these are very complicated procedures that we're asking them to undergo, transplantation, high doses of chemotherapy. You can't have a five minute conversation with somebody and say, what do you want to do? Here's a booklet, away you go and come back in a, a week's time and tell me what you want to do. It doesn't work that way. It's a case of the nursing staff taking time to explain in detail what is going to happen. The medical staff explaining from their perspective how the transplant is going to work. What are the potential side effects? Are they likely to happen to you or not? Um, and then having that conversation often two or maybe three times to really, really get the patient to understand what is going to happen. Um, it's, as one of my colleagues says, it's not a binary decision um, of you have a transplant and you live, you have a transplant and you die because there's often that grey area in the middle where you're alive but you have very, very terrible side effects and that can be life altering graft versus host disease and you think, well, my options were I wanted to have a life-saving treatment, I'm not dead but I have this terrible problem that sometimes I wish I was dead because it is so bad I cannot cope with this graft versus host disease or the recurrent infections that they're getting. And if we can explain to people, well, we've decided that this would be a very poor option for you, the state of your disease, the amount of risk factors that you've got, we would suggest to you that this isn't the right treatment for you. The patient being able to take that on board and understand the reasons why that option has been suggested rather than another option, it can, it can be a difficult conversation to have in a clinic with somebody saying, well, I really don't think you should go down this line. Um, you can upset people, but it, it, sometimes it is for it is for good reasons that you know, people, some people don't go forward to having a transplant. It's not for everybody.